As we said on Monday, we finished chapter 12 on radiation, and today we begin chapter 13. Chapter 12 was heavy on the science approach to radiation, physics. Chapter 13 is more inclined to be the engineering part of radiation. Chapter 12, there was a lot of definitions, a lot of vocabulary, and chapter 13 is titled Radiation Exchange Between Surfaces. So now we get into some of the real engineering applications of radiation heat transfer. To begin with, we're going to look at two surfaces exchanging radiation, surface A1 and A2 we identify differential areas on those two surfaces, DA1 and DA2. They're separated by a distance, capital R, and they're oriented with different angles, theta. Theta1 is the angle between the R distance and the normal distance to surface DA1, called N1. N1's normal to surface DA1. Theta2, the angle between R and the normal to surface DA2. N2, normal surface DA2. We want to find out how much energy leaves surface A1 that reaches surface A2. So here's the equation that we're going to use. Q, the energy leaving surface A1 that gets to strike surface A2, we can say intercepted by A2, received by A2. But it's this energy leaving here in all directions, some of that energy leaving A1 is going to end up going to A2. Okay, that's F A1 dash A2, the fraction. Fraction means between 0 and 1. 0 percent. 100% or something between. I multiply that fraction by the total amount of radiation leaving surface A1. Okay, J1, the radiosity, chapter 12. What's radiosity? The energy leaving surface A1. The radiation energy leaving surface A1. By direct emission, E, emissive power, plus the reflect reflected amount from some source G irradiation. J1, watts per square meter. Multiply it by A1 square meters. A1, J1, the watts leaving surface A1. A fraction of that ends up reaching surface A2. That's F, A1 to A2. Those guys are called view factors. The F factors are called view factors. We'll get more into the uh, Y in just a minute. Mathematically, here's how you would find a view factor. Now, the, the book derives this. We're not going to go into that lengthy derivation. But here is the uh, equation that you could use to find the view factor. 1 over a1 times a double integral, a1 and a2. Numerator, cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2. Denominator, pi r squared, da1, da2, double integral. Rather complex, obviously. Now, you can also go the opposite direction. How about the fraction of energy leaving surface A2 that ends up reaching surface A1? OK. Fraction leaving A2 that ends up reaching surface A1. That's 1 over A2, double integral. Same numerator, same denominator, there. And then you can notice that this double integral
They're identical. I don't care the order of integration. A2 first, A1 next, A1 first, A2 next. I don't care about that. What's under the double integral is the same. So these two guys are the same. Okay. So A1 F A1 A2 equal second one A2 F A2 to A1 We get tired of writing that A1 dash A2. So we take a shorthand notation. Here it is. I'm going to replace the view factor A1 to A2 with F from 1 to 2. I know that means area A1 and area A2. I don't need to put the A subscript on it. I don't like the dash. I'm going to call that F12. Don't say F12. OK, it's not F12. You say F12. What does that mean? F from surface A1 to surface A2. We call it F12. Especially like when there's maybe six surfaces. F56. It's not F56. It's F from A5 to A6. But we say F56. OK, so take the shorthand notation. A. 1, F, 1 to 2, equal A, 2, F, 2 to 1. All right, so that's with our shorthand notation. This guy is reciprocity. And then, for an enclosure, with N surfaces, capital N surfaces, summation J equal 1 to N. F i j equal to 1. This guy's called the enclosure law. It, it's the energy balance. So I'm going to take surface A1, with n equals 6, 6 surface enclosure, 6 surface enclosure. I'm going to write this energy balance, um, the enclosure law, for surface A1. So I equal 1, I equal 1. So F. I'll get to F11 in just a minute. For right now, ignore F11. So 
This is what it says in words. Let's assume in this classroom that the front wall is area A1. The back wall is A2, ceiling is A3, A4, floor, A5, window wall, A6, hall side wall. Six, this is an enclosure. So this is a six surface enclosure. Okay, so forget the F11 right now. Is what this was says. The fraction of energy leaving the front wall that hits the back wall plus the fraction of energy leaving the front wall that strikes the bottom, the floor. The fraction leaving the front wall strikes the ceiling. The fraction leaving the front wall strikes the window side wall. Fraction leaving the front strikes the hall side wall. Must be 100%. Where else can it go? Okay, got it. Enclosure law, energy balance. Those fractions must add up to 100%. Every surface in this room, I'll write it for surface four, the ceiling. The fraction of energy leaving the ceiling that strikes the front wall, plus the back wall, plus the hall side wall, plus the window wall, plus the floor, must be 100%, 1.0. Yeah, right. Okay, so we have two algebraic expressions we can use. Reciprocity and enclosure. Now, let's talk about F11. For a plane, our convex surface, take a plane surface first, take a convex surface, radiation leaving this surface. radiation leaving this surface this is surface AI this is surface AI so what's the fraction again a fraction of energy leaving a surface I that strikes surface I how much energy leaving this area here ends up hitting that area. Well, look at the arrows. Zero. How much energy leaving surface I ends up striking directly surface I? Look at the arrows. Zero. What's this front wall? A plane surface. What's F11? Zero. That's what I said. F11 is zero. This is illegal. Radiation doesn't do this, make a U-turn. No, no, no. It goes out straight lines. The fraction of energy leaving the front wall that directly hits the front wall, zero. Right, okay. For a concave surface. Oh yeah, some of the radiation leaving that surface hits that surface. FII is not zero. Okay, so now we have some idea of these guys. Now, where did it get its name view factor? Well, there's other names to configuration factors, geometric factor, but the textbook uses view factor. It in a way relates to your view from your eyes. Um, if I pretend I'm surface A1, the front of the blackboard, and uh, I look straight out, what do I see the most of? Uh, the back wall. What do I see the least of? The hall side wall and the window side wall. Okay. What's my view of the 
what percent of my view is the back wall? I would guess about 60 to 60, 65 percent probably. Okay, that's the view factor. How about the hall side wall? Look straight ahead. Oh gosh, 10, 12, 15 percent. Yeah, view factor. That's what it means in words. So, two surfaces, A1 and A2. And I put A2 here. Here's A1. Put that back away from right there. Uh, okay, let's start way over here. What fraction of energy leave, leaving surface one is going to end up reaching surface two? <laughs> Not much. I'm guessing less than 5%. Most of it goes that way and that way and that way and down that way and to the clock over there. No, less than 5%. Here, I don't know, maybe 8 to 10%. Here, maybe 20%, 30%, 40%, 50 60 70 80 90 99%. Leaving A1 hits A2. It's called the view factor. These two guys right here. Okay, let's take this guy right here, a plane surface. Well, no, let's don't take that. We'll, we'll take, we'll put these up here. These two guys here. How much energy leaving surface one ends up directly striking surface two? Uh, I'll give you a big, a big guess on it. I think zero percent. You got it, right O. F, one to two is zero. So you can have them like this, you know, rectangular room. What fraction leaving the window side wall strikes the floor? Okay, one's the window wall, two's the floor. Okay, let's take a simple example. Let's take a circular area, call it A1, and the hemisphere above it, call it A2. A1, A2. Now, We'll just take the general problem. Find all the view factors. What, what does that mean? Um, well, th there's, there's two surfaces. So number of view factors n squared. For this problem, how many surfaces are there? Two. Number of view factors, two squared, four. Sometimes it helps to write them in a matrix format. What are they? F11, F12, F21, F22. So if the problem said find all the view factors, there they are. Let's do the, the easy one first. Do I see any plane surfaces? Oh yeah, surface one. If I see a plane surface, F I I is zero. F one one is zero. Check mark. Got it. Uh, I'll do another easy one. What fraction of energy leaving surface A one do you think ends up reaching surface A two? Uh, my best guess is hundred percent. Right, by observation, no equations, no graphs, no tables, you see it. F, one to two, or if you don't want to do it that way. Is that an enclosure? Yes, it's an enclosure. What does that mean? That means every row in that matrix, every row, when you add them together, equals one. So, F, one, one, plus F, one, two, equal one. For this row, F21 plus F22 equal 1. Every row, you can write the enclosure law. So either you see it directly, oh, I see it, it's 100%. F12 is 1. Or if you don't see it immediately, then you say, I'm going to write the enclosure law for this row. And what's F11? I just said 0, plain surface. So what does that mean? F12 is 1. F21, oh, right there, right there. Reciprocity, F21, 
A1 over A2, F12. F12 is 1. I got it. F21. What's A1, what, what's, uh, A1 pi r squared? It, pi d squared divided by 4. What's A2? Half of a sphere, area of a sphere, pi d squared. A2, pi d squared divided by 2. You got it. The pi's cancel out and so on and so forth. Once I got F21, how do I get F22? Well, here's one thing. That's a concave surface. F22 is not zero. If you want to prove it, go over here. Second row. F21 plus F22 equal 1. So F22 equal 1 minus F21. And I know F21. I just found it. I put F21 in there, and I've got F22. Okay, I've got all four. That kind of exercise is called view factor algebra because all we're doing is we're solving algebraic equations. We're not going back and solving this big horrendous double integral equation. No, no, not in this class. But we are using view factor algebra to solve for the view factors. Okay, let's take... Um, Another one. Let's take that same, no, I'll do this one, that's okay. Um, I'm going, I'll put it, I'll put it here. Okay, so this is a big sphere and a little sphere. Two spheres. Call this guy A1 and call the big sphere A2. Is that an enclosure? Yes. Do I see any plane surfaces? No. Do I see any convex surfaces? Yes. 1, F11 one, one is 0. Got it. If F11 is 0, can I look at this and see what F12 is? Yeah, F11 <coughs> plus F12 equal 1. So, or I can say, oh, it's obvious to me. I see what F12 is. All the energy leaving the small sphere ends up directly hitting the big sphere. Right. Two ways of doing it. Just say, oh, I see it. It's obvious. Or you say, I use this equation. Uh, F11 one, one is zero. Okay, got it. I want F21. There's the equation. I want F22. There's the equation. I use the same equations whether I'm solving this problem the hemisphere, are this problem, big sphere, small sphere. I use the same equations. The solution technique is the same. The numbers are slightly different because the areas are different. A2 hemisphere, A1 circle, A1 area of a small sphere, A2 area of the big sphere, pi d small squared, pi d big squared. So, two pictures, but they both are solved the same way. By the way, I didn't put this on the board, and I think probably I should. I'll, I'll do it now. This might be useful, too, sometimes. Um, let's say we had this area, A1, and then this is at a right angle here. So this is a f area. We'll just say it's at a right angle, A2, A3. Okay, it's not an enclosure, obviously, okay? They're all plane surfaces, obviously. So here's what we can write down. A1, F1-2, comma, 3. Okay, now the subscripts get a little more complicated. 
and by the way, you can see that the A1s will cancel out. So if you want to write it in shorthand notation, But let's take the top equation first up there. Um, so that's right. Here's what it says in words. The fraction of energy leaving surface one that goes to combined surfaces two and three equals the fraction leaving one that goes to two plus the fraction leaving one that goes to three. So it kind of makes sense. But the subscripts have, have a meaning. Here's what they mean. The dash means goes to, so F1 to 2. The fraction going from A1 to A2. Okay, dash means 2. Comma means and. And. The fraction going from A1 to A2 and A3. That's what the comma means. That's how you say it in words. Fraction of energy leaving surface A1 that goes to combined surfaces A2 and A3. Now how about the backward one, A2, A3 to 1? So A2, comma 3 times a fraction from 2, comma 3 going to A1. Fraction 2, well, this A2, fraction 2 to 1. plus A3, fraction 3 to 1. So that's going one direction, leaving one, going down. Other direction, leaving combined surface 2 and 3, going up to A1. So I think you might need that for one of the homework problems, so just keep that in mind. That's why I put that on the board now. Okay, um, let's go back and look at another one. Let's take this guy here and break him down some more. Diameter through the center, A1, A2, A3. Is it an enclosure? Yes, it's an enclosure. How many surfaces? Three. N equal three. How many view factors? F's. Number of F's. N squared. Three squared. Nine. Show them. Okay. F one one, F one two, F one three. Okay, uh, let's take the easy one first. Do I see any plane surfaces? Oh yeah, I see two of them, one and two. All right, F, one, one, equal F, two, two, equal zero, plane surfaces. Check them off, one, one, two, two, got them. What else can I see, um, obviously? Oh, I, I know that F12 equal F21 equals zero. I just said that. They're, they're both on the same plane. Here they are. Put them down on the table. What's F12? Zero. What's F21? Zero. Okay, so you can say that. I see that immediately. Um, you can do this one of two ways. Every row, it's an enclosure, every row you can write F11 plus F12 plus F13 equal 1. F110. 
F120. Oh, I get it. F13 is 1. Well, of course, I didn't need to do that over there. I can see. It's obvious to me. All the energy leaving surface 1 ends up striking surface 3. It has to. It has to. All the energy leaving surface 2. Guess what it hits? Surface 3. F23 is also 1. How do I know that? By observation. I see it. Or if you want to prove it, go ahead and prove it. F21, 0. F22, 0. Yeah, F23 is 1. If you don't see it by observation, use the enclosure law for the second row. Okay, check marks. Okay, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1. Uh, what else do I have? 3, 1, 3, 2, 3. All right, got 6 of the 9. 3 to 1. 3 to 1. 3 to 1. A3, F3 to 1 equal A1, F1 to 3. Yeah, okay, I got it. Reciprocity. Uh, these two guys, okay. A3, F3 to 1 equal A1, F1 to 3. Okay, I want F3 to 1. F3 to 1 equal A1 over A3, F1 to 3. F1 to 3 was 1. Do I know A1? Yeah, it's half of a circle, pi r squared. Do I know A3? Yeah, it's half of a sphere, pi d squared divided by 2. I got it, F3 to 1. Do you think F3 to 1 is the same as F3 to 2? Of course it is. What do you say? By observation, it's symmetrical. F3 to 1 is the same as F3 to 2. By observation. If you want to prove it, go ahead and prove it. Reciprocity. A3, F3 to 2 equal A2, F2 to 3. What's F2 to 3? 1. Got it. Got it. Okay. Got eight out of the nine now. One more to go. F3 to 3. I have to use the enclosure law. F3 to 1 plus F3 to 2 plus F3 to 3 equal 1. F3 to 3. And what is surface 3 again? It's concave. It's not 0. F3 to 3 is not 0. 1 minus 2 F3, 1. Put that guy in there. Since they're the same, just two times one of them. Okay, six view factors. We didn't use tables. We didn't use graphs. We used, by observation, the enclosure law, reciprocity, and understanding is the surface plane, convex, or concave? Okay, let's do another one. I'll do it here. Okay, uh, I'm gonna look at the end of the chapter and I'm gonna work a couple real simple ones from the very first end of chapter problem, problem 13.1. Okay, let's see which one I want to work first. Okay, yeah, I'll work this one. Uh, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight different pictures. Okay, this is what it says. Find F2 to 1 and F1 to 2. So here's the picture. Okay. 
and directly above here this distance is also 100. This is surface A1, this is surface A2. Okay, find A1 and A2, uh, F, F1, 2, and F2, 1. All right. It's not an enclosure. It's kind of symmetrical. 100, 100, 100, 45 degrees. A2, square root 2, times 100. No graphs, no tables. Either you see it or you don't. Either you see it or you don't. F12 equals 50%. Half the energy leaving surface A1 is going to hit A2, and of course, half of it would go through that dashed line right there. Of course it will. It was just, that's just 50 50. But you don't use an equation, you don't use a table or a graph. That's it, you say that by observation. F21 equal A1 over A2, F12. Got it, got it, done. View factor algebra plus by observation. Are they plane surfaces? Yeah, so F11 is zero, F22 is zero. Oh, this is by, I'll put the this is D, I think I said. Yeah, D. Do it again. I'm going to do it again, but now I'm going to make this uh, 200 millimeters. I don't care. It's the same answers. Half goes left, half goes right. Nothing's changed. Doesn't matter where you, where you put that point. Way up there by the screen. I don't care. Half goes left, half goes right. Let's try another one. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's, this is A. So, A. Here's A1. Here's A2. Let me see what he says about this. Um, the words that go with this. This is a long duct. Long duct. I'm going to put the words up here with part D. The words for part D said long planes, long inclined planes. They go out that way, a long, long way, into the blackboard that way, a long, long way. A long duct comes out of the blackboard a long, long way that way, and a long, long way that way. A1 is a combined surface area. You see what it is. The vertical area here plus the horizontal area there. Circumference, pi d, A2, 3 quarters, pi d. A1. D. Radius, D over 2, plus D over 2, equal D. Is A1 a plane surface? Well, it's, com it's composed of plane surfaces, but it's not one plane surface, no. Is there something like a convex surface? Kind of like a convex surface, yeah. Uh huh. What's the fraction of energy leaving A1 that actually hits A1? Oh, it's zero. 
What's the fraction of energy leaving A1 hits A2? Oh, it's obviously 1. F1 to 2 is 1. Do I use an equation? No. A graph? No. A table? No. Either you see it or you don't. F2 to 1, oh, it's the same thing. Got it. I got them both. Pretty much the homework in this part of chapter 13 is find the view factors. I'll do one more. E, a sphere lying on an infinite plane. Okay, <clears throat> so here's a plane, here's a sphere, A1, A2, <clears throat> find F12 and F21. This is a tougher one of the three, of course. Um, either you see it or you don't. Yeah, half the energy leaving the sphere hits A2 and half goes out above it. There's a sphere and a bigger sphere. Do you think half the energy of the little sphere ends up striking the top half of the big sphere? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Do you think half it ends up striking the bottom of this big sphere? Oh yeah, I think so. Do you think the energy leaving this sphere half goes up that way? Here's a dividing line. And do you think half goes down that way? Yeah, just like that. It's a half. Either you see it or you don't. F2 to 1. Reciprocity. Yeah? That's true even for a diffuse surface? I'm sorry? That's true even for a diffuse surface? They're all diffuse. Oh, okay. Thanks for reminding me. We're in chapter 13. Every surface now is diffuse. Just so you know. And I'll tell you later on, in chapter 13, every surface is uh, diffuse and gray. But for right now, yeah, they're all diffuse. Uh, otherwise, it becomes much more difficult. Okay. Um, I'm going to work more difficult examples next time, so it's a good stopping point.